Forrest Lee is the CEO and founder of Green and now known as C. How closely do you work with him to run the company and what role do you exactly play? We are separated by two inches of drywall. <laughs> two inches, you've counted, to be exact. <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> We're right next to each other within shouting radius of each other, and that's really great. I mean, Forrest and I, let me, let me take a step back. We were business school classmates. We took a class together mm -hmm. at Stanford, and Forrest and I couldn't have come from more different backgrounds. He was one of only four students from all of mainland China to get into Stanford Business School his year. I was probably one of a dozen students from New York City to get into Stanford, so he clearly is smarter than I am <laughs> in terms of the odds he had to yeah. go up against. And that shared background, that shared DNA coming out of Stanford, which is a really entrepreneurial business school as far as these things go. So he's the brains helped. behind the business? I think it's a collective brain. In some ways, it's very hive life. He's also very elusive. Did he hire you to be the front person so he doesn't have to appear in front of people I, like me? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. He does media interviews from time to time, but I don't think elusive is the right word. I think the right word is focus. In many ways, we take a cue and inspiration from Tencent, where Pony Ma has such a religious focus on the user experience, the customer, the product, the people, the culture. Those are things that Forrest wakes up at five in the morning thinking about. Uh, those are his area of focus and to a certain extent I think we've come to realize that the role of a company leadership team is polyglot. Christine, you were a sociologist by training and when you were getting your masters you learned about Weber's theory of leadership and there were sort of the three different models, the legal model, the traditional model and the charismatic model. And I think as a community and certainly as a media and a tech industry we've sort of gotten overly enamored of the charismatic CEO. The CEO who is simultaneously number cruncher, charismatic speaker, capital raiser, product visionary, mm. hire, recruiter extraordinaire. Sometimes those are different roles. Mm. And sometimes being a jack of all trades does make you a master of none. Mm. Again, back to Tencent, Pony focuses on what he focuses on. Martin focuses on capital and partnerships and business development and many different other tasks. So there are clearly divided roles between you and Forrest. Clearly divided roles, but very, very close coordination. The beauty of being a technology company is that we build our own tools for coordination. We have a mobile messaging platform we use internally, which means we're never more than a few minutes away from each other. Let's talk about investors, because the company has been successful pulling in great investors like China's Tencent Holdings, Malaysia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, Kazana. Oh, uh, yeah. What's the secret to capital raising? One of the secrets in our business was no VC. Why no VC? Well, it's interesting. And maybe Too I'll... Too short term? Possibly, possibly. At the end of the day, I think we always thought of the business in 10 to 15 year planning cycles. Sure. And the traditional VC, as much as they try to predict the future, does think about a four to six year exit. Mm. Private equity firms are a notch better. But the best investors, we think, are families. So what's the secret to capital raising? Boy, I think the secret of being to capital raising is... Is it about is, laying out a great vision? I think it's about being honest and humble. You'd be surprised the least successful capital raisers over the long term, there may be small successes here or there, are the salesy, the salesy companies. You know, where you're sort of overstating the case and you're drawing out these reality distortion fields, as they used to call them. No, we try to tell people what's going right, what's going wrong, what our dreams are, what our mission is, how we hire, where we see the opportunity, and then we ask them to make a decision that they feel most comfortable with. Mm. But we do try to share with them our passion for the business. And if they like it, great, and if they don't, that's okay too. Let's talk about you, Nick. You, prior to Garena, you worked with General Atlantic, yes. a private equity firm. You started the ASEAN office, which led to the investment in Garena. Um, and then you were a consultant before that as well at McKinsey. Yes. How would you describe your leadership and your management style? What is uh, Nick Nash like? Oh, boring. <laughs> Incredibly boring. boring. No, <laughs> nowhere near as interesting as all the other people you've interviewed. You've interviewed the best, Christine. You're you know, being I'm humble. Just a, I'm just a simple bloke that happened to have an extraordinary opportunity to build something with a bunch of friends. It's as simple what as that. What kind of leader do you want to be in this company? I want to be a leader that's known not for what he did, but for what the people he hired and mentored did. The thing that makes me happiest in this company is seeing people that I've hired and grown promoted. I think at the end of the day, thinking of leadership less as, again, a Weberian authoritarian model, sure. but more of teaching, inspiring, coaching, mm -hmm. mentoring. These are overused words, but the leader as teacher, the leader as, as guide, 
It's a very underused style. I love that style. Let's talk more about that because you're in charge of more than 5,000 employees. How exactly do you manage talent and pull in good people to work for you? Well, it's very interesting. So let's divide it maybe into different elements that all come together. One is the identification of that talent. One is the interviewing and sort of evaluation. Then finally, it's the retention. Identification, you'd be surprised how many low-hanging fruit, to use the cliche, opportunities there are here in Southeast Asia. Mm. Hiring more women. The tech industry is infamous for not hiring enough women. Here in Singapore, about 40% of our staff is female, and that's still not good enough. It should be 50.000. Evaluation. Almost everybody we hire goes through some sort of exam or case study. I don't mean this in sort of a stupid sense, like in a superficial sense, but giving them a flavor for what the work will actually involve, having them produce a written product or do a coding exam, or in my group, I put people through a six hour process. It's such a difficult process that at one point I was interviewing someone and two hours into the case study, he got up and said to our HR person, I'm taking the job at the Sovereign Wealth Fund and walked out. <laughs> pretty good. I'm glad he made that decision. Okay, so that's not the person you want to hire. Probably not. I'm, I hope that Sovereign Wealth Fund is enjoying that person mm. now. <laughs> we didn't have the stamina okay. to go through you a multi case enough? study. No, we pay very well. It's, it's that <laughs> the work is hard. Yeah. The work is hard. Finally, retention of people. The old saying is always true. People join a company because of the brand and they leave because they had a tiff with their boss. We try to avoid that. A lot of coaching. A lot of coaching. And startup life is full of lots of little tiny mistakes not the least of which are the interpersonal mistakes, the, the misunderstandings, the, okay. the awkward conversations that happen. We try as best we can to minimize them. And finally, you work closely with Forrest Lee, the CEO, to run the company. What's the ultimate vision for C? What exciting things can we expect to see from the company? I think as technology trends come and go, the mission stays the same, which is using that technology to better the lives of the people in this region. Think about the basic food groups, no pun intended, of life. Entertainment, retail and consumption, uh, uh, payments, financial services, risk management, investing as a category, food as a category. That's a pretty big chunk of GDP right there. There's a few so slices. So the sky's the limit. Well, I think the needs are there. The human needs are there for technology to be applied to solve basic problems. As long as that's there, Christine, we'll be working hard to try to solve those problems for people. Thanks for talking to me, Nick. My great pleasure. And that was Nick Nash, Group President of C. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Do check us online at managingasia.cnbc.com for more exclusive leadership insights. Until next time, I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.